Well, let's take a walk through the code in this LabVIEW project. Taking a look at the overall structure, we have two VIs interacting with each other. We have the PC main running on your PC host, and then we've got FPGA main running on the ultimately on the FPGA target. PC main for this illustration is a simple for loop that runs a finite number of times and it toggles the indicator button zero. By means of the desktop execution node, that signal value controls this FPGA I.O. node, and then it reads the, these pair of, of I.O. nodes and displays those results on the front panel indicator. Here we have a single cycle time loop in which the button zero value is simply copied out to LED zero, and then its complement is sent out to LED three. You need to be using simulation mode for this purpose, and you can right-click on the target and select simulation mode. Now let's take a look at some of the details regarding the desktop execution node. You can find this under the FPGA interface subpalette. Let's go ahead and place that Express VI. Select the VI that you wish to control. You'll then also need to specify which I.O. nodes that you're working with. You can also use the control key to do a multi-select. Adjust the directions accordingly. We'll go with the reference clock and then you also specify the number of clock cycles that uh, elapse each time the desktop execution node runs. Now let's set up some sampling probes so that we can observe the simulation results as a waveform graph. What I'm doing is selecting the wire and then adding a sampling probe. Let's rename this one to the inverted button zero. And also, it's very useful to visualize the system clock waveform as well. I think we're done with that. Well, let's go ahead and run PC main. So PC main is responsible for toggling button zero, fundamentally. Here's the complemented version, and here is our system clock. If you look carefully, then you can see that button zero is toggling once each clock cycle. Occasionally, it can be useful to slow the speed of simulation to help you kind of think through what's going on and perhaps serve as an aid for debugging. What I'm going to do is slow down the pace of operation of the for loop back here. So this now executes once a half second. And we see the waveform plot now updating more slowly. One other point I'd like to mention when you're dealing, especially with conventional loops, I've converted the FPGA loop to a conventional loop and suddenly it seems like everything has fallen apart as far as the simulation is concerned. To illustrate what's going on here, let's create a numeric indicator for the loop iteration. We see that the conventional loop actually requires multiple clock cycles per iteration. Therefore, at times it might be necessary to increase the number of clock ticks per call to this function. So now what we see is two elapsed clock cycles per um, call of the desktop execution node.